Sam Smyers here. Today, I want to talk about how I processed the vocals for my song, Falling Away. So let's go ahead and jump into the video. All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel. And if you are new here, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel because that will help you stay updated with future videos that are just like this. If you're truly serious about improving your mixing skills, then check out the Modern Mix Academy. This is a full online mixing course that I created that will go over everything that I know about mixing and will help you create some of the best mixes of your life. This will help you create some mixes from the comfort of your own home that you can be proud to share with your friends, family, and your fans. I'll put a link down below for you to check that out. The vocalist for Falling Away I have worked with before, and so I had an idea of his vocal range, and I also had some acapellas of his that I took and I was pitching them up and down, and I decided that if I pitched down his vocals about five semitones, then I could get his vocals to sound within the range of that low vocal sound that I wanted. So basically what I did is I had my track and I reached out to the singer, his name is Ryan, and I said, hey, Ryan, I'm going to want to pitch down your vocals about five semitones down. He was like, all right, sweet, let's do it. I sent the track to Ryan, pitched up five semitones, and then he sang and wrote his vocals and sang everything normally to that track that was pitched up. And then I went ahead and edited the vocals, tuned them, time them, fix the timing if there were any timing issues, put them into my session, and then pitch them down negative five semitones to match my track. When I first get vocals back from a singer, the first thing that I like to do is de-click the vocals. Basically, whenever a singer records their vocals up close, like this close, or even on a condenser mic, this is a dynamic mic, then you'll be picking up these sounds from inside their mouth, and that just happens from your tongue moving around, from your lips moving around. You'll sometimes hear this slapping or this clicking from the saliva within someone's mouth. And because I do a lot of boosting to the high end, I don't really want to accentuate those clicks. Just doing a de-click on those vocals before I start processing them will help get rid of a lot of those major clicking sounds. To de-click the vocals, I like to use the RX-7 by Isotope. I go up to this window here and I do batch processing and this allows me to batch process all of the vocals instead of having to do it one by one. Here are the vocal files and I will go ahead and drag them into the RX-7 into the batch processing window here. And now all the files are dragged in and then I can go to my processing steps. Let's go ahead and hit the negative button and hit the plus. Then go down and select the mouth declick. You can choose custom settings or you can choose a preset. For this example, I'll just use a preset and I'm gonna go to, let's do eliminate clicks and then that will apply that eliminate clicks preset. And then down here you can choose where you want to bounce the files to. And also if you want to add any text after the files, I usually add underscore RX7 and then I'll save the files as waves. And then when you hit process, it processes all of those vocal files. And then here is the folder with all of those vocal files. As you can see, I have the underscore RX7. I will import those into my Pro Tools session. Here is the Pro Tools session. Let me go ahead and play you the pitched up track along with the dry vocal. You just spend all my time on you. You were so good, you were my youth. There was nothing we couldn't do. It wasn't just a place. God's oceans, it was so blue. In the moment, I lost with you. Time I spent it on one of those. And that's the demo track. As you can see, I have some of the other vocal tracks in here. And let's just go ahead and open up the Melodyne. I like to do my Melodyning in Pro Tools. I feel like it's easier to edit and do the timing edits in Pro Tools for some reason. Just the shortcuts are really nice in Pro Tools. As you can see, I have some Melodyning on this lead vocal here. And I can also do some timing things, fixing the timings with harmonies. If I click on one of these gray blobs here, let's go to pre-low. That's going to be the pre-harmony, the low pre-harmony down here. And you can see the notes down here. You can make sure that you have the right notes for the harmony. If I want to edit these, then I can click on the blob here, hold down option and click and drag. And I can move these blobs in time 
to make sure that that harmony is in time with that lead vocal. Once I do that, then I go ahead and print the track. I will go to a send here and let me show you how to set this up. So no send and I will click here, go to bus, go all the way down to one of my buses because this is just a mono track. I'm gonna go to this bus that I labeled print and this is print L, so that's mono. Go ahead and option click this to bring it to zero and I will right click and go to bounce print L and make sure that you are only sending one track to that bus and then I can label this lead vox underscore MLD for Melodyne and make sure all my settings are correct and I have the correct folder and then bounce that down and bounce down all of your tracks and then once you do that then you can import it into Ableton Live. Here is my Ableton session for Falling Away and I'll play you some of the track so you can hear how it sounds. You just spend all my time on you We were so good, you were my use There was nothing we couldn't do It was just a phase You are so shins, you were so blue In the moment I lost with you The time I spent didn't wanna lose Every minute saved, yeah No, I don't understand it We were good but they vanished I have all my vocals in a vocal group and I'm using the VC160 for the compressor, the Pro Q3 and the Pro DS for some DSing. And that's all I have on that vocal group. For this lead vocal, let's check out what I have on the lead vocal here. EQ8, VC76, and two of those. Pro Q3, and then the CLA vocal. And for the CLA vocal, I usually like to use the treble and the compress. I usually don't use this pitch option, but for some reason, I thought it sounded really nice with these vocals because they are very electronic sounding. So I turned this on and put this on stereo. And then the Pro Q3, Decapitator Pro DS, I have some automation here with utility, and then I have reverb, and that's basically it for that lead vocal. And I'll often copy those settings to the rest of the vocals. Now, like I was saying, I pitched down the vocal, negative five semitones. If I check out the transpose here, we have it set at negative five semitones. And if I solo this real quick. And that's what it sounds like when I pitch it back up to regular. I have this low pre-harmony here, and then I have some echoes here. I like to do reverby echoes at the end of phrases, and to do those reverby echoes, I'll put them on a separate track. Basically to do that, I will take part of the lead vocal and just copy and paste it to a new track like that and add lots of reverb. And we can check what's on this track. We've got some Valhalla verb. And then there is a pre-harmony here. Hey, no, I don't understand it. We were good, but they vanished almost like you left in panic, yeah. Just a pre-vocal that's a lot lower for that pre-chorus and I've got another vocal echo here. Yeah. Let's hear that with the lead vocal. Panic, yeah. I don't know where we're standing, why I love needed a banish, did it take it off for granted, yeah. I'll find it out. When he says, yeah, that vocal, it rings out and it fills in that empty space. And I just added that here. And that's just going to have a echo on it, which is a Ableton stock plugin. And then I have some Valhalla reverb and I'm EQing it a bit. Let's go now over to the drop vocal. I have the lead vocal for the drop here. I find it out of breathe, thinking we're in too deep. Falling away with nothing. How do we go back to Let's go ahead and check out this high vocal here for the drop. I find it out of breathe, thinking we're in too deep. Falling away with nothing. How do we go back to love it? I find it out of deep, trying to find out what we need. I have some formant applied to it with this little altar boy, and then I'm adjusting the pitch just on the clip itself. You can see I have this transposed up seven semitones because negative five plus 12 is going to be seven semitones. And it also sounds fairly mono. I don't have that stereo effect on this vocal here. And then I have the doubles here. I find it out of breathe, thinking we went too deep. And then I have some of these vocal echoes here. I find it out of breathe, thinking we went too deep. 
Falling away away from nothing. How do we go back to love it? I find it hard to see. Trying to find out what we need. So I have those vocal echoes there. Let's go ahead and hear that entire group there. I find it hard to breathe, thinking we're in too deep. Falling away away from nothing. How do we go back to love it? And that's just the lead vocal, that high pitched up vocal, and then the doubles. And then I have this melody here. For the drop part, let's go ahead and play the whole track together. And for these mm, vocals, <laughs> that's what I have them labeled, I have four vocal tracks. They're all fairly centered. I wanted them to really sound in the center of the mix and have this mono feel, sort of have this vintage feel. So I kept them all mono instead of spreading them out. I have one that is an octave higher. And then these other three are just going to be doubles. And then we can go to the second drop part, which is just going to be the same as that first drop part, but then I add in some harmonies. Let's go ahead and check out those harmonies here. And then after that, we can go to the second verse. And I have a lot of the same effects that I have in that first verse. And then that second drop there, I'm adding another track to these mm tracks here. And that's going to be a harmony. Let's play them all together. And we can check out the processing on there because it is a group. I processed all of these vocals individually. And then on the group, I have some Pro Q3. I have the OTT. Let's play it without the OTT. And then I'll play it with the OTT. And I have some Valhalla Vintage Verb. Pro Q3, and then I have the kickstart on top so they have this pumping effect. Let's go to this break section after the drop. And you can hear that running is ringing out, and then I have a ad lib here. Basically, these vocal echoes down here, I just added them in that break. And on that track, I have the Echo plugin and some Valhalla Vintage Verb. And then on these ad libs here, let's go ahead and check these out. These ad libs here. I have some little Alter Boy changing up the format a bit. Decapitator, EQ8. I have the Echo and also some Vintage Verb. Keeping it fairly simple, just putting on a delay and then putting on some reverb after that delay and EQing it. And so that is really it for the vocals on my song, Falling Away. In this video, I really wanted to focus on the whole process of how to achieve vocals like this. I didn't really go into very deep detail on the settings on the individual plugins, but I have other videos on my YouTube channel, which you can find if you just search vocals, mixing vocals, things like that, where you can find more videos that are focused on the actual settings. Mainly in this video, I want to show you the whole process, how to have that vision of where you want the track to sound at the end. In this instance, I knew that I had to pitch the track up. Five semitones have the vocalist sing to that pitched up track. 
edit his vocals, and then pitch down the final vocals to match the original track. And so I hope that was helpful if you are making any type of song like this, Deep House, EDM, having these vocals that are tuned down or up like that. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to my channel because that will help you stay updated with future videos that are just like this. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.